one that's uh, you know the remainder doesn't equal zero now all I'm gonna do is use the same polynomial on the top so the same numerator and in the bottom all I'm gonna do is change it from x minus 2 to x plus 2 so it's not a factor of the the top right the top quadratic equation so your question would be or the expression that would give you is the yellow guy so our top divided by that so they would say simplify this expression right or do long division on this expression if they said simplify you would factor the top and see if the top factors factors of this guy if any of them cancel out this guy then you're done now we already know that the factors of the top guy you know there is no, none of the factors of the top guy is equal to x plus 2 it's equal to x minus 2 so they can't cancel each other off so we can't simplify this just by factoring the top because the factors of the top does, do not equal the factors of the bottom. That means the remainder is not equal to zero. When we do the long division, we're going to find out the remainder does not equal zero, right? Which means the bottom guy is not a factor of the top guy. So if they say simplify this or do this long division, we're going to have to do the long division because we don't know synthetic division yet, but we will soon, okay? So let's do the long division. Long division. What we're going to ask, ask ourselves is this. What are we going to multiply x by to give us negative 3x squared? Well, we're going to multiply x by negative 3x, right? Because negative 3x times x gives us negative 3x squared. And then we're going to see what else, what the rest of it looks like, right? Because the only thing we care about during the long division process is matching the first number here with the first number here. And one thing to keep in mind, and again, this should be a given by now, is whenever you're giving polynomials, you have to have them in descending order, right? Your highest order goes first and then you go down from there. So if they give you, you know, an expression like this, that's all mixed up, you know, you got x to the third and x to the five plus x to the two or whatever it is, they're all in, you know, not in the right order, descending order, you have to put them in descending order. Any polynomials you get, and that's a given rule, any polynomials you get, any functions you get, you put them in descending order, okay? Uh, and that's a given. Uh, so if they try to trick you by mixing your expressions up, the orders up, take the x's and put them in descending order, okay? Uh, and these are single variable functions that we're really concerned about right now. Multivariate fu variable functions we'll get into, you know, later. So. What are you gonna multiply x by to give you negative three x squared? You're gonna multiply it by negative three x. So you put your negative three x on top of this. Each term follows each other. You should keep things in order. So negative three x goes up here and multiplies this guy and multiplies that guy. Negative three x times x is gonna be negative three x squared. Negative three x times two is gonna be negative six. Now, again, this is subtracting the bottom from the top. So it would be minus negative three x squared, minus that, mi that guy minus negative three x squared, and five x minus negative six x, right? Now I don't like all those minus minuses all over the place. So I'm gonna change the sign of that guy, change the sign of that guy, and I'm gonna add them. They were both negative, so they both turn into positive, and I'm gonna add them. So negative three x squared plus three x squared is just gonna be zero. 5x plus 6x is going to be 11x. That guy cancels that guy. So usually what I end up doing is I don't put zero down here. I just kill him, right? And 5x plus 6x is going to be 11x. And then we're going to grab this guy and bring it down. So we've got positive 2 coming down. And always remember the sign in front of the number always goes with the number, right? So positive 2 comes down. So again, the question that we're going to be asking ourselves is, what do we multiply x by to give us 11x? We don't care about this guy right now. This guy's gonna work itself out, right? If it doesn't work itself out, it's just gonna have a remainder. So what do you multiply x by to give you 11x? Well, you're gonna multiply by 11. 11 times x is gonna be 11x. 11 times two is gonna be 22. Change the signs and add them. So that becomes negative 11x minus 22. 11x minus 11x, they kill each other. 2 minus 22 is negative 20. Now, you can stop doing the long division as soon as the power over here is less than the power up here on your first term for your divisor for whatever's in the denominator. 
you're done factoring, right? Or you're done uh, doing the long division. So if this was an x squared, right? If this was x squared plus two, and you know, you went through your thing and you had an x term in the bottom here, you would have to stop because if this was an x squared and you had an x over here, this power over here is bigger than this power over here and you can't go, go any further, right? So as soon as the power on the first term in the denominator becomes bigger than the power of wherever you've gotten to in the long division, you're done, right? What we're gonna do right now is write this in the form of the division statement, okay? So I'm gonna forget about writing the x's. It's just gonna be p is equal to q times d plus r. So p is the top, our numerator. Q is our quotient, this guy up here. D is the divisor and R is our remainder. You see all that? We sort of had to go on a slant because we're hitting this guy. Should have written down further down here, right? Anyway, so basically what we have is our product, this guy, is equal to that guy times that guy plus that guy. So this, the numerator, is equal to negative 3x plus 11 times x plus 2 minus 20 right and what that means is if you foil this guy out and subtract it to 20 you would get this guy back so we broke down this guy into things multiplied together and you know whatever the remainder is so we try to factor it we basically wrote this guy in a different form and we got this guy right so both of these guys this guy this side is equal to this side okay now there, there are reasons why we're gonna do this, or there are reasons why we do this. One of the ones, just as a teaser, what this means is if your x is equal to negative two, because this would be x plus two is equal to zero and you bring the negative two over, when your x is equal to negative two, y is equal to negative 20. When your x is equal to, you bring the 11 over, you set this equal to zero, and then do your division. If you set x is equal to negative 11, over negative 3 which is 11 over 3 if you sub that into your original polynomial your y is going to be negative 20 so these guys are actually coordinate systems that we have there are two points on and this guy's a parabola okay so let's just let, lay this out and we'll do the graph over here and you'll see where the points lie so if you actually rewrote these this guy the q and the d as x equaling something right so you took your quotient and set it you took your quotient and set it equal to zero and solve for x and you took your divisor x plus two set it equal to zero and solve for x what you would have is you would say x plus two is equal to zero and solve for x so you got x is equal to negative two and you would set negative three x plus eleven equal to zero and solve for your x and you got eleven over three if you took those, x is equal to 11 over 3, and subbed it into the top, the numerator, what that would give you is your remainder, your y, for a graph, right? So these are actual coordinates that you just figured out. So when x is equal to negative 2, y is negative 20. When x is 11 divided by 3, y is negative 20. So if we put it on a graph here, we'll just put it on a graph here, negative 20, well, our x-axis is gonna be up here and we're gonna graph it down here. For a quadratic, for a parabola, when you got a negative sign, down, negative sign here in the front, in the highest order, in front of the x squared, that means the parabola opens down. So what we have for our coordinates is these are two coordinates on the parabola. Negative two and negative 20, x is negative two, y is negative 20. When x is three, 11 over three, y is negative 20. So our parabola goes up and comes down again. And those are two coordinates that we have, negative two and negative 20, which is, negative one is which one this one so that's negative 2 and negative 20 and 11 over 3 is that guy right now we know by factoring that guy that it has factors right so if we're looking at that 
quadratic equation right there from the you know qu uh, the quadratic formula if we look at the quadratic formula the discriminant that we've talked about in the quadratic formula section the discriminant of that is positive is greater than zero that means when you take the square root where it's x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a b squared minus 4ac that's positive greater than zero so you can take the square root of that so you're going to actually have two x intercepts and we already knew that because we factored that guy right so we factored that we know it's got two factors that means it's got two x x intercepts that means the parabola crosses the x-axis and comes down and from before we know exactly what the factors of that thing are the factors of that thing are x is equal to 2 and x is equal to Sorry. negative 1 over 3 so in the positive side this guy goes up and crosses at x is equal to 2 it hits it so there is another point that we know for the parabola and goes up the other one is x is equal to negative a third so it goes up here this guy goes up here I should have drawn a little bit closer and goes up here right another coordinate that we can find later on we'll get into it is the y-intercept and the way you find the y-intercept all you do is just set x is equal to 0 and the y-intercept is just going to be 2 okay so anyone who's done graphing parabolas knows pretty much what I'm talking about hopefully knows what I'm talking about and if you don't hopefully this is a pretty good uh, you know sort of a lesson of how you know what all these coordinates mean right so let's throw on our two factors up here our x-intercepts and graph that too so our parabola is going to look something like that hopefully you could draw it better than me because that should be you know looking like a parabola instead of going little, like a little bulge so that's our parabola right and again all of this information we got to hear just by doing our long division our long division when we got to the remainder knowing that there all the, all the remainder is if there is a remainder it means it's the y coordinate when x is equal to whatever this is and x is equal to whatever that is when you set them equal to zero when you solve for them right so there's a lot of things going on here and you know usually when this is taught all they teach people is you know do the division do the long division you get to you get down to here and you know what does that mean right well that means that's the y when x is equal to either or well, for this guy anyway you set the denominator equal to zero and you solve for x so x is equal to negative two so when x is equal to negative two y is is y is negative 20 whatever the remainder is right and the quotient gives us another point now for parabolas there's an axis of symmetry going down here and we'll talk a lot more about this there's a lot of things with uh, with parabolas there's there's um, special things that you need to know about it right there's symmetry with it you know if you cut yourself down the middle hopefully your this ear is the same distance from your center as the other ear right and there's symmetry in in a lot of things in life and parabola parabolas are one of them there's symmetry to parabolas if you cut the parabola down straight down the middle it's symmetrical this side is symmetrical to the other side if you want to find the axis of symmetry for a parabola all you do is add that negative 2 plus 11 over 3 and divide it by 2 and that will be your X your axis of symmetry going straight up so if you want to find out what the Y coordinate is what the vertex of a parabola is all you got to do is find the average of those two guys right once you find the average of the X's you plug it into your numerator here your product here right your dividend here right and once you plug that x value here the average of those two guys whatever it spits out is the y coordinate for the vertex we'll do another another uh, long division a little bit more complicated and uh, again maybe we'll go ahead and graph it to graph it as well but i doubt it because it's going to be a higher order and we don't want to go that far yet right we will later but we don't want to go that far yet uh, so let's do another one and and then when we get into synthetic division we'll come back and we'll use synthetic division for these guys as well and you'll see that we get the same answer